still here, anyways. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The greatest invention of modern times is the wheel. And don't you ever forget it. Peter? Yeah? Maybe they'll give us an extension. Another month or something. The money's due in two weeks from tomorrow. We've made a promise. And we're not even close, are we? If you had all our savings, plus the money we've earned from doing every possible odd job there is to be done around Indian River, we're not even halfway. Come in. I said come in, please. Chubb, if that's you out there trying to make tricks, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was you, Mr. McLeod. Yeah, that's a mighty cheery greeting, I must say. Glad to see you. Come on in. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Mr. McLeod. How's everything up country? Oh, seems very promising. Might be a matter of millions eventually. That's why I come back early this trip. Can we do anything for you? Well, the reason I'm here at the moment is I'm looking for my nephew, Angus. Uh, somebody said he was working hereabouts. Oh, he's gone to get some more lumber, Mr. McLeod. Be back in about an hour, he said. Oh, that's not so bad. Is it all right if I wait for him out at the gate there? Well, you can wait right in here if you want. Well, no, that's mighty kind, but uh, I don't sit around indoors if I can help it. Ever since I was 60, got a theory it's bad for the liver. Not that I ever had any trouble with it. The liver, that is. Hey, yeah. Uh... You fellas uh, look awful depressed. So you got trouble of some sort? Yes, sir, I guess we have. Well, uh... What's the problem? Say, uh, do you want some advice? Can you... Can you tell us how to raise a lot of money in a hurry? You're starting kind of young, ain't you? It's not for us personally. It's for the Indian River Scholarship Fund. We made a $40 pledge in the name of the Rangers. Well, that's mighty generous of you, I must say. Only we're gonna look a little bit silly, I'm afraid. We've done everything we could think of, and we're still 1986 short. I see. How much time you got left? About two weeks. Well, that ain't so bad. Leaves you time to maneuver anyhow. Say, have you ever given any thought to discovering a gold mine, for instance? I know it doesn't seem like much to you, Mr. McLeod, but... Uh, just trying to be helpful, my boy. Discovery of gold was something I did with a certain amount of regularity when I was your age. Of course, I suppose you'd rather strike uranium. Nowadays, it's more up-to-date, more in fashion, no doubt. What we need is $19.86, Mr. McLeod. I heard you. And I may as well tell you straight away, I ain't got it at the moment. Oh, Mr. McLeod. Now look, there's one thing you must never do. And that is, never be embarrassed to ask money off a man that's uh, 104 years old. Some of these days I might have some again. Then meanwhile, I better get out of here and look for my nephew. Be seeing you, fellas. Boy, he's something, isn't he? Is he really 104 years old? What do you think? Hey there, boy. Class, good hey, to see you. Come here a minute, will you? <laughs> just wanted to ask how you're making out up here. Begin to feel at home? Oh, yeah, everything's just fine, thanks. Like it better than any other place I've ever been. Yeah, I figured it'd work out that way. Of course, I've been in the bush for a while. Well, have you? How'd it been? Have any good luck? Very successful, very successful. Say, uh, tell me, I suppose you're going into the financial conference. Hey, how'd you know about that? Oh, I know all sorts of things. Say, uh, I've been thinking about your problem, and I got a suggestion. Now, the quickest way I ever made money in my whole life... Is what? What? Just inherit a fortune. What? Ha! <laughs> Pretty good idea, ain't it? Just so happens I've got a better one right here. Ooh, what's that? Something I read in the newspaper. Uh, some newspaper advertising it. No, sir. Big front page article. And if we do it, we'll probably be in the newspaper ourselves. What on earth you got in mind, boy? 
Well, I don't want to speak about it right now. I want to check with the committee first, okay? Yeah, well, all right, all right. Go about your business. Don't waste time with me. See you, Mr. McLeod. The trouble with young people these days, they waste too much time. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So I owe me a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Next week, maybe. The only thing wrong with me is I need a little capital. What is this? Some kind of a joke? I've never been more serious in my life. Look, Chubb, you come barging in here telling us how we not only can pay our pledge, but double it. Then instead of telling us how, you just, uh... Look, I asked you if you want to go on a camping trip tomorrow. Well, do you or don't you? I can anyway, even if I wanted to. My grandmother's coming. And the rest of us have to stay home and try and earn some money. Okay, I'll try it another way. Just take a look at this. Little item at the bottom of the page. With the photograph. So? Pretty neat trick, eh? What's a mastodon? Largest North American animal. Been extinct ever since the Ice Age. A million of years. All they find now is bones. This isn't your great idea for raising money, is it? Fifty bucks worth. Chub that silly. Could hunt for millions of years and never find one of those things. It just so happens I know where there is one. What? Remember when I first came from the city? We went up camping up around Spirit Lake. And I got lost for a couple of days. Yeah. Well, that was pretty stupid of me. And I wouldn't do it now. But which way did I go? Do you remember? What do you mean, which way did you go? North, south. Where was I when George found me? In what direction? You're about ten miles east from the lake. A little south, maybe. Back behind Beaver Creek someplace, wasn't it? Hey, that's right. Great. Now we're in business. Do you know what I saw out in that bush? The mastodon. Chubb, you aren't kidding us, are you? Of course I'm not kidding. I saw the bones lying on the ground, just like the ones in this picture. Maybe even bigger. Do you think you can actually find them again? You just get me there. I'll be able to recognize the place. All we gotta do is dig the bones up and take them in the museum and we've got 50 bucks. Hello, Fred. I see. What time do you think he's starting out? Five o'clock in the morning. Well, that's fine. They'll be waiting for you outside Potter's store. Okay, thanks a lot, Fred. Well, you're off to a lucky start, anyhow. You've got a ride as far as the East Fork of Beaver Creek. After that, you're on your own, gentlemen. You think this is going to be a wild goose chase, don't you? I didn't say that. Well, no, but... Uh... But what? I'm giving him my full cooperation, the use of my maps. But you usually have a whole lot of advice and suggestions for us. Well, you're the one who knows where this thing is, aren't you? You're the expert this time. Yeah, I guess so. My only suggestion is, uh, be careful, use your heads, and don't get into trouble for once. Now, how long do you expect to be away on this uh, expedition? Well, we're going to take enough food for about a week and a half. Well, as I remember my paleontology, the mastodon is a very large animal. If you can't find one inside three days, I'd say forget about it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some work to do. Okay, thanks, George. All right, about five o'clock tomorrow, right? Yeah, you think you'll make it? Try anything once. That's the darn bones. <laughs> The place sure looks deserted this time of day. You think maybe Fred forgot us? No, we're just a little early. About the earliest people in the world. <laughs> Sounds like somebody else is up. Good heavens, it's Mr. McLeod. Uh, good morning, boys. What are you doing in the bicycle? Oh, just pottering around. I met some fellas last night, we got to talking. But about an hour ago, I got tired and decided I'd get some exercise. What? You mean you've been talking all night? Well, that nephew Angus of mine is a talkative fella, you know. Pardon me, I'll park this thing. Boy, he's really something, isn't he? Uh, you boys out to get rich and famous, I take it. Well, we're gonna try anyway. Remember that idea I couldn't tell you about yesterday? Yes, sounded very promising. 
I didn't even tell him who it was. Well, don't. He'll probably get it all mixed up. Hey, I think he's coming, finally. Relax, boys. That ain't Fred. Well, it looks like his truck. How'd you know we were waiting for Fred? Yeah. Never underestimate a fella that's 104. Hey, uh, how far are you fellas riding with Fred? Oh, he's going up to McGraw to haul a boat out somebody left up there. He's going to drop us off around Beaver Creek someplace. Yeah, I see. That means you'll be working out east of Spirit Lake. Well, I hate to tell you this, but that's very unprofitable country. Not for what we're looking for. No matter what you're looking for, it's unprofitable. Of course, mind you, I haven't been up in those parts for a number of years, but I know that country like the back of my hand. As a matter of fact, that's the only place in the whole world I ever shot an elephant. You shot a what? Yeah, I thought that'd make you sit up and take notice. Yeah, I expect Fred will be along in about three minutes, probably. probably. Well, go on about the elephant. Well, like I said, I shot him, that's all. Fortunate thing about that trip, I had an elephant gun along with me. Otherwise, I'd have been dead instead of him, probably. Are you teasing us, Mr. McLeod? No, of course not. I got that gun from my brother out in Africa. Of course, I never expected to use it, naturally. But if I'd tried to shoot him with an ordinary carbine, it would have been like going up against a steel wall with a BB gun. Eh, it just goes to prove the power of coincidence, I suppose. Yeah, but what was an elephant doing in the middle of the Canadian wilderness, Mr. McLeod? Well, no, I never got a chance to ask that question, unfortunately. But I was traveling north, minding my own business. 1907, I think it was, when suddenly this great mad beast come charging out of the bushes at me. Well, that gun of my brother shoots bullets that big. It's like an anti-aircraft, practically. So I pumped about 15 or 20 shots into him, but he still kept coming. It was a day a lot like this, a little hazy, kind of chill. With the last possible bullet, he dropped at my feet and expired. Really? Yes, really. And then what did you do? Well, I dug a hole and buried him, naturally. It was a very interesting year, 1907. Yeah, I expect that's Fred, finally. Kept you waiting, Mr. McLeod. Oh, that's all right. It was a pleasure, Fred. All right, now you boys get your stuff aboard and ride in the back there. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I decided I ain't going with you today, Fred. Huh? Why? What's the matter? Well, I still got a couple of little bits of business to do. I thought maybe I'd stay around here for a couple of days, maybe. Now, why didn't you telephone me from Angus's? You didn't need to come out here and wait in the road like uh, this. I was up anyway. You know, have a good trip. I'll see you when you get back, maybe. Okay, you take care of yourself now. I all set back there. Yep. Let's go ground like I said we would. So which way's the mastodon? Well, we go south now until we come to that stream I was telling you about. Someplace over there. Uh, Chubb, if we're supposed to go south, it's over there. Are you sure? Want to look at the compass? Well, I believe you. It's just that... Okay, that's south. Come on, let's go. What's he doing now? Reconnoitering, obviously. You know, I was just thinking. It's going to get dark pretty soon. I told him that an hour ago. So what's the word, Chubb? Recognize any landmarks yet? Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think this is it. I think we've made it. He wouldn't be kidding, would he? 
Doesn't look quite the way he described it, certainly. I thought maybe for a while we'd missed it, but when I saw that... Well, come on, put your packs down. What's the matter with you guys? Are you sure this is where they found you, Chubb? Look, I was up in that tree last spring. That's how I remembered. We camp here for the night, and tomorrow we start working, okay? Okay, anything you say, Chubb. <laughs> I figure it. I couldn't have been further than a quarter mile from here when I saw this thing. And sticking out of the ground like a rock, you say? Right. So all we gotta do now, split up and search this little valley here. Sure, and when one of us finds it, we get together and dig it up. This is CS LEF Dad calling XNY 556A for Apple. Better see who it is, Mike. XNY-556-A, Apple. Hello, Charlie. What's in your mind? Just passing over your neighborhood. How's the dinosaur hunt coming? It's not a dinosaur. It's a mastodon. Listen, if you need any extra bones for this thing, let me know. I'll check the kitchen. Maybe I can fly some out to you tomorrow. Very funny. Sorry, fellas. Seriously, though, if you have any problems down there, don't be stuffy about it. Just holler, okay? Over and out. Okay, over and out. Old Charlie and the egg beater being curious. And he's got a great sense of humor, too. Well, might as well get used to it. What? You mean they all think we're crazy? Matt, George, everybody? Probably. Look, we've got nothing to worry about. We know where it is. All we gotta do is... Wait a minute, Chubb. I've got an idea. Let's stash this radio away until we're ready to talk to people. Okay? Okay by me. Certainly. Gentlemen, the expedition will preserve strict radio silence until D-Day. There's no word yet, I take it. Well, they had food for a week, and it's only been four days. Uh, that's the trouble with modern-day communications these days. When you need the most, you blow a tube or something. Now, when I was a boy, no, I... Will you excuse me, please? Oh, certainly, certainly. Hello, this is C-S-L-E-S. Dad calling X-N-Y 556-A for Apple. Come in, please. Of you want to scout around, take a look? Nope, we got a job to do at Harvest. You still aren't worried about them. They know how to get along in the bush. If they were in trouble, they would have let us know somehow. I think they're just too stubborn to come in out of the rain, that's all. It's my ID that they found the mastodon, and it ate them. <laughs> There's only two things wrong with that. Mastodons were vegetarians, and they've been extinct for 50,000 years. Yeah, so have I, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one nice thing about being extinct. It saves on the postage. <laughs> How's that license of mine there, George? All ready. Come and get him. Yeah, I'll see you, Fred. From now on, you're completely legal again. Well, thank you, George. I suppose you'll be leaving town now. Yeah, I thought I'd hang around until them boys get back, assuming they do get back. So you're worried, too? Well, let's just put it this way. It wouldn't take them eight whole days to give up on that mastodon thing, or would it? If they're having fun, just on a camping trip? Well, as I understand it, they got money coming due. And they seem pretty blame serious about raising it, apparently. So? So, uh, under the circumstances, and, and assuming that uh, these fellas are uh, more responsible than a person like me, for example, I can't figure why they'd be hanging around out there all this time unless they had trouble of some sort. I never thought of that. Oh, there's probably nothing to it. 
Jim. No, I think you're right. Time to take a look. Get me Charlie Morris. Attention, Rangers. Attention, Rangers. If you have no radio, build a fire. Communicate at once, please. Communicate at once. This is an order. What do you think? Should we answer him? I guess we might as well at this point. This is XNY 556A Apple calling GM Jack Apple Yellow. Come in, please. What do you mean, where am I? Where are you? You did what? Hold on, I'll be right down. Don't argue, I'm coming down. But aren't you even impressed, George? I said I was very impressed, didn't I? Well then, why don't you call the museum for us? Because it isn't a mastodon. What? But if it's not a mastodon, then what is it? What you found was an elephant. Ah, uh, come on now, George. I mean... You want the evidence? A mastodon had four tusks made of bone. This has only two, and they're solid ivory. Not to mention the fact you found a bullet in its skull. But how could it be an elephant? There were never any elephants around here, were there? Now, just one that I ever heard of. Got away from a circus over in Templeton about 50, 60 years ago. Killed a couple of men, went rushing off into the bush and was never seen again. Except by the courageous hunter who shot him, of course. And we thought he was kidding, remember? Aren't we a bunch oh. of dopes? So what it all comes down to is, they did all that hard work out there and all they dug out was... One large, completely worthless skeleton and a couple of tusks worth at least $150. What? I'm not kidding you. They're solid ivory. What actually happened was, you got me one shot from your little old carbon, right? Yep, yeah, that's right. But that's sensational. Yep, yeah, probably was. Then why'd you tell us all that stuff about shooting 25 shots from an old elephant gun? Why can't you tell the way it really happened? Well, everybody knows what a gall darn liar I am. Figured nobody'd believe me. Well, I, I gotta be getting along up country. I'll see you fellas. Go on, ask him. Mr. McLeod! Mr. McLeod! Are you sure you won't take part of the $150? After all, the tusks were yours. Look, I told you. Put it in your gall darn scholarship fund. Man like me, $150 is chicken feed. That look like money, 25 cent piece. Sure don't make pockets the way they used to. Probably belongs to one of them kids in there. However, I owe myself a quarter, as I recall. Mm -hmm. 